okay, I'm going to do three experiments today to prepare some gases. And I want you to have a look at the apparatus that I'm going to be using, because you can see that effectively it's the same apparatus each time. I've got some solid in the bottom of my conical flask, um, and I've got some liquids in these what are called tap funnels at the top. Um, now I'll talk a little bit as I do each of the experiments about what the solid is that's in the bottom and what the chemical is that's in the top, but I'm going to be able to use the same setup to prepare each of my three gases. So I hope you can see from the labels on the bottles here um, which gases I'm going to be making. So I'm going to make hydrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now I want to show you the rest of the apparatus because you can see there's a big tube coming off the um, off the side arm of this conical flask and I'm going to use it to connect up with this setup here. So the tube is going to go into the water and underneath this little thing that looks like a dog food bowl um, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. I'm going to collect the gas by a technique called displacement. Okay now you can see I'll just lift this out so that you can have a look, better look at it. It does look very like a little dog's food bowl but it's slightly different because there's a hole in the bottom of it here, or in the top when I'm using it, and there's a little cutaway here that's actually called a beehive shelf, and I think that's because of this little opening here, so it looks like this entrance to a beehive. But that's cut away like that so that it can fit over the pipe. And then the hole that's in the top there is so that any gas that forms will be able to bubble out of this. Now what I'm going to do is to collect the gas in a gas jar. Now this is a gas jar and at the moment I've got it full of water. So what I shall do is to turn it upside down and I'm going to put it on top of this little beehive shelf. And that way any gas that's produced from my apparatus will go along this um, hose into the little beehive shelf and bubble up and be collected in the gas jar. And that technique of collecting gas by bubbling it through water like that is called displacement. It's really handy because it means that we can see when the gas jar has got completely full of gas. Uh, whereas if we just put an empty gas jar there and was just full of air, we wouldn't be able to tell when it had got filled with the gas that we've produced. Okay, so I'm going to now open the tap on my, on my apparatus here. And in the top here, I've got some sulfuric acid. And in the bottom here, I've got some zinc with a little bit of something else to help speed up the reaction. So essentially, zinc and sulfuric acid are going to react together to make hydrogen gas. Okay, so I'm going to just open the tap and let some of those, and let them react. Now there's a lot of air in that flask at the moment, so I'm not collecting the first bubbles of gas that come out of my hose because it will just be air. So I need to give it time to see that it's fizzing and actually genuinely making hydrogen. Yeah, looks like it's fizzing nicely in the bottom there. And I have a guess when I think it's making hydrogen and there's no air left in it. So I'm gonna guess that's about now. I'll pop my little hose in under the um, little hole in my beehive shelf. And you can see now these bubbles of gas are all bubbling into the gas jar and getting trapped. So I'm going to see how many gas jars I'm going to be able to collect full of hydrogen and I'll join you in a minute to have a look at that later and test for the hydrogen. I did rather well with my hydrogen collecting experiment. As you can see, I managed to collect three gas jars of hydrogen. Um, but actually hydrogen is a, it's a bit explosive as a gas. So the test that I'm going to do for it, I'm not going to do on these gas jars because I think it wouldn't be very safe. So I'm going to do something else rather crafty with them later on, which I think you're going to enjoy. So I'm just going to put them to one side. I also managed to collect three little test tubes full um, of hydrogen gas from my experiment. So I'm going to use those for proving that I've got hydrogen gas and that's a much safer way of doing it. Now, hydrogen is a gas that's less dense than air. So if I hold the tube upside down, any hydrogen that's in there will be trying to get out of the top of the tube. But of course it can't because it's, um, because it's glass there. So I can take the bung out of this tube and I know the hydrogen is not going to be coming out of the bottom. So that's very handy for me because I'm now going to use that to try to test for my hydrogen. Now hydrogen does something when I put a lit splint in it. So let's see if we can see what it does. Okay, we're going to try again now with a second tube because it's quite a nice little test. And let's 
try again with the third one. Lovely. Now we describe that sound as a squeaky pop. So this is a very characteristic test for hydrogen gas. It gets a squeaky pop with a lit splint. Let's have a look at making some more gases. Okay, so this is the next gas preparation. Um, and for this one, I'm going to make some oxygen gas. So the solid I've got in the bottom is something called manganese dioxide. You can see it's a black powder, manganese dioxide. And the liquid that I've got in the top is hydrogen peroxide. So that's something that you can use for um, lightening your hair. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a bleach, a um, type of bleach really. So hydrogen peroxide in the top and manganese dioxide in the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to, as before, let the hydrogen peroxide run in there. Um, I'm not going to collect the first order bubbles that come out of the end of the tube because they will be mixed with all the air that's in the flask at the moment. going quite quickly. I'm going to start collecting gas now because I think I've probably got a good lot of oxygen there. So if I pop that into my beehive shell, you can see I'm collecting my gas by displacement. And this technique only works for gases that are not soluble in water. They have to be gases that are going to stay as bubbles. So the three that I'm making today are ideal. The hydrogen, the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. Okay, I'm now going to try testing my um, oxygen in this gas jar to prove that it's oxygen. So the test for this, oxygen helps things to burn. So if I put um, a glowing splint in there, hopefully it will burst into flame again. And we call that relighting a glowing splint. So let's give it a try. There's my glowing splint. Well, hey! I wonder how many times we can get it to relight. There's one, two, three, four, five, I've counted 20 so far. I think I'm a bit afraid to do this anymore because it's getting close to my fingers. I'm going to start with a new splint. Let's see how many more we can get. That was probably the last one and I have to admit I lost count there while I was so busy trying to get them to relight. So I wonder how many you managed to count. Something else that was interesting you might have noticed is it did make a little bit of a popping noise but I think that's really because it was in this enclosed container and it was making a sort of an echo or a reverberation in there. That's not really something that we write down as being part of the oxygen test. The important thing to know is that it relights a glowing splint. Okay? have a go at preparing another gas. This is 
the final gas preparation and I'm going to be making some carbon dioxide. Now in the bottom here I've got marble chippings or limestone chippings, they're pretty much the same thing. And I'm going to be running some hydrochloric acid in from the top. So those two will react together and make carbon dioxide. Um, now as before, I'm not going to collect all of the gas right from the outset because I need to push all the air in the system out of the way. So let's just open this up. Wow, and that's reacting quite fast. Okay, and now we're going to get ready to collect the gas in the gas jar using our beehive shells. Okay, that's collected a lovely gas jar of carbon dioxide. Right, I'm now going to show you how to test for carbon dioxide. So I'll just get the apparatus ready and I'll join you again in a moment. I'm going to show you the test for carbon dioxide now. And to do this test, I need a chemical called lime water. Okay, now this is not lime in the sense of lemons and limes. This is lime in the old fashioned sense of something that you can make from limestone. So um, this chemical is actually calcium hydroxide and we call it lime water. And that's already in my boiling tubes. Now carbon dioxide is heavier than air, it's more dense than air. So if I take the lid off this, I know that the carbon dioxide is going to be staying down in the bottom there. Now because of that, it means that I can test for my um, carbon dioxide in quite interesting ways. One of the things I'm going to do is to transfer my carbon dioxide from here into the lime water using a pipette. Now, this is a funny little experiment because pipettes are usually used for sucking up liquid, but I'm going to use it today for sucking up some of my carbon dioxide gas. Now, you look like a bit of a twit doing it because you look like you're sucking up nothing, but I hope when you see me bubble it out through the lime water, you'll see that I have in fact sucked up carbon dioxide gas. So here we go. Luckily, I'm wearing a dark coloured jumper today, so I'm hoping that you'll be able to see the change in the lime water reasonably well. Let's put another squirt in there. I hope you can see that the lime water is going cloudy. So at um, key stage three level, which is what you are, we can use that word to describe it. We can say the lime water goes cloudy. As you get older to um, GCSE and A-level, you have to describe that as a white precipitate forming in the lime water. Let's add some more. Oh, that's gone really cloudy, it's lovely. Okay, now the second way that I can transfer carbon dioxide into my lime water is by pouring it. Now again, you look like a bit of a twit because you look like you're pouring nothing, but we know that carbon dioxide is heavier than air, so I should be able to pour it from my gas jar into my boiling tube. Let's see how it goes. Up. And sure enough, my lime water has gone cloudy as my carbon dioxide poured from the gas jar into the, into the boiling tube and then got mixed with the lime water. So I hope you've enjoyed those two, that's quite fun. I'm going to show you my final experiment now with the um, hydrogen that I collected in the gas jar. So I think you'll enjoy this. Let's, let's have a look at it. When I collected the hydrogen earlier in those gas jars, I said it was too dangerous for me to try igniting it in the gas jar because the volume was too large. So instead, I've transferred the hydrogen from the gas jars and used it to inflate a balloon. And I'm gonna have a go at igniting it. And you can see I've come outside, so I'm hoping it'll make a, quite a nice big bang. We'll see how it goes. 
Ooh.